soil is vital for life on Earth. All the food we eat starts as plants that grow in soil. But how does soil form? How does nature transform bits of rock and sand into something that sustains life? The answer to those questions may be found in an equation that soil scientists call Effective Energy and Mass Transfer, or EEMT for short. Let's figure out what that means. First, we have to look at the critical zone, the layer on the surface of our planet where life occurs. Soil is the heart of the critical zone. All the energy that enables life in the critical zone comes from the sun. Plants transform solar energy into food using photosynthesis. Heat from the sun powers the water cycle. Energy from the sun is also a key part of the soil formation process. For years, scientists have been trying to understand how soil forms, what drives the process, and how long it takes. Recently, scientists working with the Catalina Jemez Critical Zone Observatory at the University of Arizona have developed a way to look at the soil formation process, taking into account two key factors. First, water, most often rain from the atmosphere. Second, energy from green plants. That method is called Effective Energy and Mass Transfer, EEMT. To understand EEMT, we have to look at what scientists call soil structure. Scientists who study soil know that soil in any given place can change greatly over time. And they've observed that over long periods of time, soil usually changes from simpler structures to more complex structures. The more complex structures in a soil correspond to greater amounts of mass and energy added to the soil. So how does energy enter the soil? Think of building a house. You have a variety of materials from wood to nails to paint and you need all these parts to make your house. Energy is required to lift the boards, nail them together, put on the roof and paint the walls. You need energy to transform the materials into the structure of a house. Similarly, energy is required to build or create a soil. The energy that forms soil comes directly from the sun. Solar energy, in the form of light, enters the Earth's atmosphere, heats water on the surface of the ocean, and changes that water from liquid to vapor, so it becomes clouds. Ultimately, those clouds pour down rain, and the rain transfers that energy and the water to the ground. Light from the sun also lands on green plants, and through the process of photosynthesis, those plants use that energy to form new carbon molecules and build their bodies, creating new biomass. The sun's energy is then stored in the body of the plant. When it rains, or when a leaf falls from a tree, solar energy is transferred to the ground. The energy stored in the rain and the leaf can then be used to build the soil. The rainwater dissolves minerals in the soil, and it nurtures the microorganisms that grow in the soil. The organic material in the leaf decomposes to become part of the soil, providing food for other microorganisms. The energy from the sun has been transferred to the ground to form all the structures and diversity that we find in soils. Soils are at the heart of the critical zone, the zone that supports life on Earth. Across the entire surface of the Earth, we can observe this process of soil formation and the increasing complexity of soil structure as energy is added. Using the effective energy and mass transfer approach, scientists can calculate the amount of energy that has been transferred into the ground across a region like a watershed. They can describe the level of soil development and they can calculate the movement of water through the ground. EEMT is a good way to understand how soils form so we can make better decisions about how to sustain healthy soils. As our world warms and our population grows, healthy and abundant soil will be increasingly important for the well-being of all humans and the planet.